Hello everyone, welcome to Geetam's Inside Prep Series. I'm Surya Madnala, Senior Trainer from Geetam University. In this video, we understand what ratio is and we solve few questions on ratios. Now let's see what does ratio mean first. So the definition of ratio states here that two or more quantities of similar kind is compared in terms of ratio. So they're pretty clear on saying that when we are trying to compare two or more quantities which has a similar characteristics or similar properties. So the, the quantum which we are trying to compare should have a similar characteristics. Then only we can compare them. They can be compared in terms of ratios. Not necessarily that they have been supposed to be compared in terms of ratios, but they can also be compared in terms of percentage. Provided that percentage differ from ratio only by the number of quantities to be compared. When we have seen in the video of percentage saying that when two quantities is been compared, okay, whereas in ratio, you can compare two or more quantities as well. Now say suppose if I ask you to compare my age or else you say father's age to that of son's age, So I'm trying to compare father's age with son's age. So this is absolutely admissible to compare because you see the quantum which we are trying to compare has the characteristics of age of similar kind. So it's permissible to compare. So I can say that father's age to that of son's age, let's suppose if I write F is to S, this is permissible. But I cannot say that father's age to that of son's height. So this is not acceptable because the quantum which we are trying to compare is not having the similar characteristics. I mean, the kind of quantum which we are trying to compare. Okay, so we need to be, uh, we need to be focused on this part when we are trying to compare two quantities, do they possess of similar characteristics or not? If they're not, we cannot compare them. So the ratio is not necessarily that I compare only father's age and son's age. I can also do in this way, the father's age to that of son's age to that of wife's age or mother's age. You can compare three quantities in one go. Yes, that's possible. So father's age to that of son's age and to that of mother's age. So there are three quantities which has been compared together. So this is how the ratio is benefited over percentage when we try to compare things provided both of them possess the same kind of work which has to be done. Now, how do we write when we compare two quantities or two or more quantities? Now, let's say I've been comparing father's age to that of son's age. So I write father is to son, where in this particular first portion in the ratio is called to be antecedent. And the second portion is called to be consequent. So you're just trying to compare two things. Now, if I say they are in the ratio of threes to one, if I say the father's age to that of son's age is a ratio of threes to one, that does mean that three parts are of father and one part is of son. So altogether you have four parts in which three parts goes to father and one part goes to the son. So this is how we compare things. Now, if I ask you if the total age of father and son is 40, if the total age of father and son is 40, so now we can say that 40 is nothing but four parts. Now, if they ask us to identify what is father's age, now father's age is nothing but three parts out of the four parts. So again, if you start applying the chain rule here, if you start applying the chain rule here, you, you easily find out the way to answer this. So this will become 30 as H. So this is how the comparison can be done with the help of ratios. Now let us deal with few questions on ratios and understand more clearly what ratio and how ratio can be used for comparing quantities. So this is first question which I've got for you guys. Find the value of X if X is to three and is equals to 15 is to nine. Now the representation of a ratio can also be written in fraction. Let's suppose X is to three can be written as X by three. If I write A is to B, 
which can be written as a by b. If I write y is to x, can be written as y by x. So the antecedent goes in the numerator and the consequent goes to the denominator. So this x is to 3 can be written as x by 3, which is equals to 15 by 9. And further, we can solve for x here. We get x is equals to 5. So this is an easy one to do because here we are just understanding how do we write a ratio in terms of fraction. How do we write a ratio in terms of the fraction? That's it. When it comes to a question like this, for an example saying that if x is to y equals 2 is to 3, so they say that x is to y is equals to 2 is to 3. That does mean that x by y is nothing but 2 by 3. And y is to z is 5 is to 7. So y by z, they are saying that 5 is 5 by 7. What are they asking? Oh, they are asking about finding x, y is z. Fine. Rather than going in this way, we can decide to solve this by checking up the value of x and y and then, then replacing the value for y here. But then again, I would rather suggest you to work in this way. So if x is to y and y is to z. So in this way, I write my numbers. So I see 2 is to 3 and 5 is to 7. Now again, applying chain rule over here, we can get the equal and find equal the ratio between the ratio of the three variables comparison. Now when I see here, three parts is equal to nothing but two parts. So five parts is equal to how many parts? So definitely more than two parts. Agreed? When three parts is equal to two parts, so five parts is definitely more than two parts. So what do we get here? What do we get here? So more means what? Five by three into two. So you get 10 by 3. So finally, you get a ratio in this form. 10 by 3 is to 5 is to 7. Now, if I multiply the whole ratio, if you want the ratio, this is an ab absolutely right ratio for the given ratio in terms of x, y, z. But if they are expecting an integral ratio, since we have a fraction over here, if they are expecting us to find an integral ratio, we can do one thing. We can multiply the whole ratio with the 3, with 3 and it stands equivalent to this ratio as well. That does mean that it finally becomes 30 by 3, 5 by 3, oh, sorry, 30 by 3, that is nothing but 10, and then you have 15, and then 21. So finally, the ratio stands in this way, saying 10 is to 15 is to 21. So I, I will just take one more example to explain this because this is a very important one. They may ask you to compare two ratios and form a single ratio wherein it, it shows the comparison between two or more quantities. So let us take one more example here. If suppose x is to y given three is to four, y is to z given five is to six. And they're asking us to find x, y is, x is to y is to z. Fine, that's possible. So I write three is to four here, and I write five is to six. So this is our y term, this is our x term, and this is our z term. Now, either you can compare this, you can just try to identify this, or else you can try to identify this. Anyway, you get the same ratio only. So let's suppose this time we work on this part, on this part. I see that five parts make six. So four parts will make how much? Will it be more than six or less than six? Again, if I question myself, I find that it is definitely less than six. So what does it stand for? If it is less than six, then our fraction becomes four by five into six. So finally we get 24 by five. Oh, finally we have got our ratio, wherein x, y, z ratio has got, uh, we got as three is to four is to, 24 by 5. Now, if I multiply 5 to the whole ratio, I get I get 15 is to 20 is to 24. And this is a final ratio that stands for x is to y is to z, where x is to y is 3 is to 4, and y is to z is 5 is to 6. So let us take with the next question now. With the help of these two, what we have done, we will just try to make use of this in the further questions as well. Now they're asking to give us an equivalent ratio 
they're asking us to give us an equivalent ratio to the given ratio. So they've already given us a ratio of three variables saying one by two is to one by four is to three by four. You might have seen in the previous case, you might have seen when we have got a ratio like this, one of the ratio, one of the variable has a fractional value where the other has an integral value. We started multiplying, we started multiplying with five to make it an integral ratio. So you can do it in this way. So you're taking a common multiple of the denominators and multiply it with the whole ratio. The same thing we will carry out here. So if you take a common multiple of the denominator, I see four as the common multiple of the denominator. So I multiply four to this whole ratio. So further it gets reduces to an integral ratio. So when I multiply four into one by two is to four into one by four is to four into three by four. Finally, I get, what do I get? So two is to one is to three. Oh, this is what the equivalent ratio for this one is. So it's simple now. So whenever you get an ratio which is in fraction, do try to convert that into integral ratio and then start solving the questions. So let us see now the typical questions on ratios, how the ratios can be used to solve two questions. Now here I've got a question saying ratio between two quantities is three is to four. So they've given you the ratio of two quantities saying three is to four. If the first is 810 rupees, so they say that three parts is nothing but 810. So find the second one. So it's an easy one to understand here. So four parts is equal to how much? Instead of this, they can also ask, find the total amount. Find the total amount. So that's also possible to identify because I have no, I know here that there are two parts, two, the quantities is distributed into two, one having three parts, the other one having four parts. So together they have seven parts. So seven parts is how much if three parts is 810, even this is possible. This will lead you to the total amount. This will lead you to the second value. So four parts will be definitely more than 810. So your answer should be four by three into 810. So this is 270, 1080. Now, what if the question is in this way? Two numbers are in the ratio of five to seven. So the two numbers, one, since it's, if, if I say that together they have 12 parts, the one is of five parts, the other one is of seven parts. So five parts, seven parts, and what is the next part of the question? Oh, the difference is two ten. So that does mean that two parts is nothing but, the difference between these two is two parts, is 10. Find the numbers they're talking about. So if you want the first number, which is a five parts, yes, it's possible to identify. It will be more than 10. So your answer stands to be five by two into 10, that is 25. If you want the second number, again, you do the same chain rule here. So two parts equals to 10, seven parts equals to how much? It will be more than 10. So your answer is seven by two into 10, that is 35. So the numbers are 25 and 35. See, you may observe here, the whole chain rule comes into the application here to solve the questions on ratio as well. Now, a little advanced one when it comes to solving the ratio. Well, let's take the question like this. Divide 680 among A, B, and C such that A gets two is to three. Oh, sorry, A gets two third of what B gets. So A gets two third of what B gets. Oh, wonderful. And B gets one fourth of what C gets. And now the share of C is. So this, this is what they're asking, the share of C. Let's see if let's suppose C is having C rupees with him. If C is having C rupees with him, B will have how much? Since they said told here us that B gets one fourth of what C gets. So B is getting one fourth of whatever C is getting. Okay, yes. Now, what is that A getting? A is getting what two third of B is getting. 
Okay, fine. Now you know that this further can be written as two by three into B's value is nothing but one by four of C. So finally it becomes two by 12 of C or else you can say one by six of C. So if I see them, A, B is to C in a ratio. If I try to compare all three, all three of them's amount, all three of them amount, all three of the amounts, so I get A having one by sixth of C, B having one by fourth of C, and C having C itself. So if I try to reduce it, so I get one by six is to one by four is to one. So what is a common multiply I can multiply to this ratio? I multiply it with 12. So finally I get the ratio as two is to three is to 12. So the amount which is distributed between A, B and C are in the ratio of two is to three is to 12. What is the total amount? Total amount is 680, which comprises of how many parts among the three? Yes, it comprises of 17 parts. This is two plus three plus 12. So that is 17 parts. So 17 parts is nothing but 680. What are they asking? The share of C. The share of C is nothing but 12 parts. So 12 parts will be how much? It is definitely less than 680. So you get 12 by 17 into 680. So this curve reduces 40, 12 fours. So part of C is nothing but 480. I believe this is pretty easy to get the answer there. If you just know how do we reduce the ratio of, uh, um, I mean, which is in fractional form into a uh, integral form, or else you just need to plot out your equation and then form into a ratio and you get your answer. That's it for this today's video, day. guys. Let us end up by this. I would just suggest you that first try focusing on the chain rule and then again into the ratios because chain rule is the most important application which we will use in the ratios to solve the questions. So by this, I call up, up, I call up on the video. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.